In the previous video, we were given the task of solving the circuit to find the voltage in the capacitor VC after we close the switch at t equals zero. The switch had been open for a very long time. The solution to that exercise ended being this one, the voltage in the capacitor given by this expression in terms of the P operator. This is a differential equation in the heavy side notation. We can write that differential equation using Leibniz notation like so and we did that. If we solve the second order differential equation, we find Vc, the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time for t greater than zero. But to solve this differential equation, we need two initial condition values. We need the initial value of the voltage in the capacitor Vc0 and we need the initial value of this derivative dvc dt at zero plus as well. I repeat, we need vc at zero plus, let's call that vc naught, and we need dvc dt also at zero plus, that is right after we move the switch. We'll call that vc naught dot. The question now has become, how are we going to obtain those initial conditions? This one and this one. Well, we only have to remember that this value, the voltage in the capacitor right after we close the switch, is the same value of the voltage in the capacitor before we close the switch. So we're going to find this value from a snapshot of the circuit at zero minus. OK. And what about this one? That value we can compute remembering that dvc dt is always the current in the capacitor divided by its capacitance, and that is valued also at zero plus. So we solve the snapshot of a circuit at zero plus, find the current in the capacitor at zero plus, divide by C, and that's going to be the other initial condition that we need, dvc dt at zero plus. Oh, I see. So let me see if I got this right. We obtained this differential equation from the circuit right placing inductances and capacitance by impedances, right? Yes, that's correct. And now we go and get a snapshot of the circuit at zero minus, which usually is in this steady state, so capacitors are going to be represented as open circuits and inductors by short circuits. And there in that circuit, we're going to find this value, the voltage in the capacitor at zero minus, and that is this. Yes, that's right, too. And then we take a third circuit, a snapshot of the circuit at zero plus, in which inductors are represented by current sources, capacitors are represented by voltage sources, and we solve the circuit, and we find the current in the capacitor, and divide that by C, and that's going to be this. That is also correct. So to solve one of these exercises, we solve three circuits. One in P, a snapshot at zero minus, and a snapshot at zero plus. Let's proceed. Snapshot at zero minus, right before we move the switch. The switch is still open. This switch is still open. So that means that being that the circuit's been like that for a long time, it's in DC steady state, and what we do is we represent the capacitor as an open circuit, so there is no current in this branch, and I eliminate that completely. You see, there is nothing in here. I represent the inductor as a short circuit, like so. More. Because this current is zero, Ix is zero, this voltage source, this controlled voltage source, whose value is 2Ix, is going to have a value of zero volts, so you see it's represented as a zero volt source as a wire to in this particular case. So this is a circuit we need to solve at t equals zero minus. Let's move that to the left hand side so we have space to compute. Reference node, node one, node two. Controlling equations, no. Evil branches, no. Two KCL equations, those two. I leave those for you to pause the tape and then verify that those are the KCL equations. And now we go to the calculator, we solve them, and these are the voltages V1 and V2.
this voltage and that one with respect to the reference. This node is 2.86 volts higher than the reference, and this node is 37.8 volts below their reference. That's why we have a negative sign here. Okay, but what we're looking for is actually the voltage in the capacitor in this circuit at zero minus. Hmm. Okay, that voltage in the capacitor. How am I going to find it? With a KCL equation like that. Remember, it doesn't have to follow the circuit. How am I going to write that? Going up from here to here, I go, this is V1 plus V1 minus VC0 plus 15 volts. So this is this equation, 15 plus V1 minus VC0. That is equal to zero. And from there, we obtain that the voltage in the capacitor, this one, at zero minus is 17.86 volts. That one, that is our first initial condition. And the initial current in the inductor, in this inductor, it's going to be given by this expression, 10 minus V1 divided by 2 ohms. This V1, using that value, we get that the current in the inductor, IL0, is 3.56 amps. And those are the two initial conditions of the voltage in the capacitor and the current in the inductor. And we're going to take them over to the snapshot at T equals 0 plus. Snapshot at t equals 0 plus. Well, in this circuit at 0 plus, this switch is closed, so this current source is bypassed. Fine. But now this inductor is represented as a current source with its initial current that we just computed at 0 minus. And this capacitor is going to be represented by a V source with its initial voltage that we just computed as well at 0 minus. The circuit is going to look like this. The inductor is represented by this current source. The capacitor is represented by this V source at zero plus. And this source has been bypassed, as you see here, by the switch. What are the values of those two sources? Well, those values are just the initial values that we computed at zero minus. This one is 17.9 volts, and this one is 3.56 amps, as we computed at zero minus. Now we solve that circuit to find the current in the capacitor, in this case, and in some cases, not needed now, the voltage in the dock. Reference, 15 volts, one and two. Identification of the nodes, branch currents, we write the necessary MNA equations, we go to the calculator, solve them, and we find that Ix, which is the current in the capacitor at zero plus, is negative 228 amps. Now we divide that by C, the capacitance, and we get dvc dt at zero plus, negative 6.85 volts per second. And we have the two initial conditions that we need to solve the differential equation. Let's solve the differential equation. The characteristic equation is a quadratic equation with the same coefficients and equated to zero on the right-hand side. We solve that and obtain, in this particular case, two real and different roots, two eigenvalues that allows us to say this circuit is overdamped and the solution for this voltage is actually an expression like this. The voltage in the capacitor is going to be the sum of two exponentials with those two eigenvalues in the exponents. K3 is easy to compute. It's just this right-hand side divided by 87. So K3 is 13 volts, the final value of the voltage in the capacitor. The question is, how are we going to find K1 and K2? For those, we have the two initial conditions, VZ0 and DVC DT at 0 plus. Differentiate that expression like so. Evaluate both of those at t equals 0. Equate this to the values for VZ0 and DVC DT0 like this and like that, which we obtain. We have two equations, two unknowns. We go to the calculator and solve for K1 and K2. K1, 242, and K2, 244, in here and in there. The voltage in the capacitor, then, in that capacitor as a function of time for t greater than 0, is the sum of those two exponentials with that final value. And that is the final solution of this exercise. But before saying goodbye for now, let's summarize 
our findings. From a circuit at t greater than zero with inductors and capacitors replaced by their impedances in p, we find the differential equation that we need to solve. From a snapshot at t equals zero minus, which usually is in this steady state, we find vz naught and il naught as necessary. From a snapshot at t equals zero plus, we find dvc dt at zero plus and also dil dt at zero plus if it's needed at all. In the snapshot at zero minus, usually we are in this steady state, so inductors are represented as wires and capacitors are represented as open circuits. At zero plus, inductors are represented as a current source with this value and capacitors are represented as a V source with this value.